I am in southern Ethiopia, in a place called the Harina Forest. I'm here to record surround soundscapes in this cloud forest. Right, I'm going in. Good luck. Check out part one of this video if you haven't already. Sometimes the best recording spots are quite well hidden and not that easily accessible. Success! Success! <laughs> Thank you. After a short hike back to the lodge and another delicious breakfast, we head up to the Seneti Plateau again to do some more recording and photography. Right, so today I'm at the EWCP camp in the Seneti Plateau and my objective right now is to record these burrows. In these burrows there are countless rats, grass rats, mountain grass rats and giant mole rats. And I will use my lavalier microphones, drop them in the holes and hope that the rats will not eat them. We'll see how that goes. Still, it's actually cold, even with the sun. And since this is about 4,000 meters altitude or 13,000 feet, I feel a little lightheaded. I think I'm also dehydrated. But that's a small price to pay for good mouse recordings. Right. I believe these burrows are all connected because I've seen rodents go in and out. To my surprise, the mice and rats are more clever than me and completely avoid the burrows that are close to where I put the mics. I was even cleverer than them though, because I also left my handheld out, so I still get a few recordings. Not the best recordings I've ever got, but still good enough. One thing I've been meaning to do for a long time is to find a carcass and to mic it up with lavalier microphones so that I can record the wildlife that feeds on carcasses and on carrion. I'm particularly interested in recording vultures fighting over bits, even hyenas. So we go look for a carcass in the village. So we're in the village of Rira and we're trying to purchase a goat, a sickly or old one. And I wonder if it not make it for longer. Uh, but it's probably huh? to be a little more difficult than expected. Not finding anything suitable in the village, we drive back up to the plateau, hearing that a local sheep herder might have something suitable for us. It looks like we're in luck. I can get a sheep that doesn't feel too well, that hasn't been eating in a while. 
my friends Baruch and Amma slaughter the sheep on a craggy bit of the plateau and we spread the bits around so that they're easily seen by scavengers flying overhead. We retreat about 100 meters away and keep a lookout with binoculars and long lenses. I start seeing a few ravens flying about, even lemurgires, which are also called bearded vultures. They're huge birds feeding on bone marrow. They pick up bones and they drop them from great heights and then they go and eat the marrow. They're quite specialized raptors and in many places extinct or close to extinction. But it looks like they're thriving in the Sinaitic Plateau. Unfortunately, the weather, my enemy, turns and there's a storm on the horizon. It gets pretty windy all of a sudden and it starts raining, so there's no choice but to pick up the rigs and drive back to the forest. We leave the feast out for scavengers and we hope it won't be eaten by feral dogs. bus over here has to have music, a really loud music playing so you can hear the bus coming and I'm, I've become quite interesting for all the village children. Hello, how are you? Hello, Salam, how are you? Oh, you speak English, great. This is you. <laughs> we still haven't found any fuel, so I'm enjoying the view. It's a spectacular view, actually. Too bad there's a little litter. Not as much as I expected, though. Good morning, it is 7 a.m. I had a good night's sleep but I'm still exhausted. I think the past week and a half has taken a toll on me. So uh, today we're driving south again to the village where we got fuel a few days ago or a week ago, I lost count. And we're going to do some recording over there, some country ambience and hopefully drive off the main road and find a place where we can record some pristine nature as well that's not guaranteed since as far as I've seen Ethiopia is mostly countryside and villages and it's not surprising when you think that Ethiopia has a hundred million inhabitants as usual this morning the mountain and the landscape looks completely different just because of the clouds. This time I can see the peaks, but I can't see the, the middle part. And the long course is just beautiful. After yesterday's trip to the Seneti Plateau, I feel a bit lightheaded and exhausted, 
So today we drive back to the village in the south to get a better feel of the place. They kept quiet. The insects were loud, the birds were loud. You hear people filling the fields. It's a nice laid back atmosphere. And now we're going to explore this village some more. We're going deeper in the bush. Maybe do some more countryside recording with the stuff. Alright. That Birbirsa is uh, I don't know the exact name in uh, Amharic, but they call it uh, Birbirsa in Oromic. I see. Most of the time, the local people are just using the kinds of the uh, plants for uh, uh, fishing. The mix of birdsong, insects, distant villagers working their fields, and also some distant cattle and other farm animals is just idyllic. I would listen to this over and over. It reminds me of my childhood back in Romania. It is just a beautiful soundscape. So I'm getting taught how to eat, actually how to peel and eat sugarcane. Which is an interesting experience in and of itself. I'm hoping it will taste good. So I recorded some village walla with the help of all these beautiful children. Who then taught me how to eat sugarcane. Sugar <laughs> it was a little tough, but it was fun and it actually was quite sweet yeah, and delicious. And now we're going to look for a banana tree. I have to thank Baruch for that. He, he sorts out everything for me. Thank you, Baruch. You're welcome. Of course, it's the rainy season, so the storm doesn't keep us waiting for long. Back at the lodge, I have a delicious lunch and then I go back to my room and take a quick nap while my rig is recording outside. I couldn't imagine a better place to rest, relax, meditate and record. Accompanied by Baruk again, I go on a hike up the hill from the lodge towards a bamboo forest I spotted while I was flying my drone the other day. This promises to sound different to what I've recorded so far, so I've been keen on recording it for a while. I hope that the rain will die down and I'll be able to record more than just rain on bamboo. It's half past five in the afternoon. We hiked up the hill into the bamboo forest and left the rig out for the night. I hope it's recorded. Something else besides rain. The rain would be good as well. It certainly sounds different in the bamboo forest than another forest that I've recorded in. There's also a lot of minute bird song, alarm calls, small chirps, soft whistles, which create a really interesting atmosphere. Now let's head back to the lodge and take the rest of the day off because we burned it. And I was right. The rain eventually subsides 
and I can record frogs, birds, insects, humidity. It sounds great. It sounds just like a cloud force is supposed to sound. Right, I'm going in. Let's hope I don't bump into the snakes. Here we go again. I just love these moments when I have to crawl towards where I left the rigs out. The only thing I have to be careful about is snakes, scorpions, spiders, monkeys, warthogs, wildlife basically. As long as I make a lot of noise, they shouldn't stick around. We just pick up the rig and it's still raining softly. There is a very sparse down chorus, which I quite like. And we're heading back to the room. And I'll switch the batteries, copy over the data, and hopefully do some car recording afterwards, even if it's raining. On the way back to the lodge, we spot a flock of wattle divers, which is a bird that's endemic to Ethiopia and Eritrea. It's a bird that I've never heard before, and it sounds like angry old men yelling. Sublime. The rain eventually stops, so I get to do some car recording. Tuesday morning, it's time to go. It's been a wonderful two weeks and I'm a little tired, so, uh, even though I'd like to stick around for another couple of weeks or so, I also want to go back to my daily routine. It's been a wonderful trip, I'm really happy I came here. Now I have to listen to 500 gigabytes of recordings and to sit through another couple of hundred gigabytes of photos and videos but that'll probably be enjoyable Before I decided to come to Ethiopia, I had slight doubts about this location. Looking back, I think they were unfounded. The location was terrific, it was just brilliant for field recording. The locals were just great, happy and friendly. It is just an incredible location. And I'm actually going back in a few months time. Check out the link in the description if you want to join me. There's a couple of places still open for intrepid field recordists. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You're welcome to checking out my Patreon page and becoming a patron. Your help is greatly appreciated. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.